Hey, 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 guys. Welcome back to another episode of Devs Like Us. For this episode, we're going to go through why we're going to go through and talk about whiteboard interviews and, you know, some of the practices that you can go through, um, some of what you may expect in those interviews. And we're going to definitely give you some of our thoughts behind it, whether we like it, we don't like it, you know, how we weigh them and uh, some resources for you guys to look into um, as you go through your study process for these interviews. Without further ado, welcome to another episode of Devs Like Us. Hey guys, how's it going? It's going well, JB, how are you? Really good, you know, bless and highly favored. Hey, oh. <laughs> shout out to the Sunday recording. Hey, hey, hey. Up the <laughs> what's going on, Clarence? Hey, how's it going? Uh, good, 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 good. All right, what, what you got for us today, JB? All right, so we're going to start out with um, pretty much how to prepare for these whiteboard interviews. Um, one thing I will say is for these whiteboard interviews, this is after, you know, you've done all the fanfare that comes um, with, you know, submitting that application, um, redoing your resumes, talking to the HR people, make sure you check off those lists uh, and things like that. And this is where it gets down to the nitty gritty of what do you know and how can we best, we as in the company best use you to further our mission or our goals for this particular company. Um, and so, you know, some ways that you can prepare is there's a lot of different things out there. So um, some that I know of, there are some handbooks that people have written. These are actual developers who went through the same process. Um, there are study guides that people have gone through. Um, there's a bunch of different applications that you can use and things like um, Leak Code and Algo Expert and a handful of others that you can do to help, you know, refresh those skills and, you know, bring back the things that you don't quite remember from, you know, your last interview or even from when you were in school, things like that. So, um, so yeah. Uh, how are you guys feeling about coding interviews? We know that Clarence, uh, Mr. Hopper, is, you know, a <laughs> an interview expert. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, Chris, how, how, the, how is it for you when it comes to, you know, the more traditional interviews that, you know, everybody gets no matter what type of um, degree or job that you're going through versus the technical interview and, you know, sitting up there at that whiteboard and going through the process? Well, I think uh, firsthand, I guess it, it uh, just depends on who is interviewing you. And you know, like you said, they're just like the different types. I know I've been through like a couple where uh, I actually did like a, a panel uh, interview one time where, you know, I met the customer, kind of like the, the, the end user, uh, actually. And, you know, I did very well on that. I felt like I was kind of a salesperson. It, it felt like, you know, I was just in my natural habitat. And then it came down to the actual coding interview where the tech leads came in and, uh, Let's just say the the tempo changed, and uh, I mean, it, it uh, all in all, I think it all is kind of similar. But you know, for the person that you're talking with, who's less technical, you know, it's easy enough to kind of impress, I should say, versus mm -hmm. like when you actually get around folks who do, you know, this stuff on a day to day. You know, they have a, a, a process and they have a thought. Uh, uh, or at least like a thorough kind of like environment where now they're trying to see how do you fit in to, you know, their, their mm -hmm. whole system. Uh, so uh, when getting prepared for, I guess, like the technical uh, interviews I've learned over time is that uh, I used to stress the, you know, what do I need to know? What do I don't know? Um, and so forth. But uh, from, you know, kind of uh, time and time again, I've realized that the most important thing that I could do when walking in is just you know, being kind of a free mind so that I can think logically when asked, you know, certain questions. Gotcha. How do you feel about the tech interviews, t uh, I think they're definitely necessary. It, it's, uh, they definitely vary, like you all said, they vary from 
um, depending on who the, the potential employer is. But I think it's, it's definitely necessary. There are some feelings I have about, um, you know, I, well, actually, I haven't even thought about some things until, you know, friends who have experienced have introduced to me like, hey, we have to, we have this take home <laughs> project <laughs> to do. And like, I might not even get this job and I'm basically working and they feel as though they're contributing to something that the company might like actually really use. And so I do have some thoughts about that, but it's one of those things where I guess you necessarily don't have to do it. Um, so it's, I feel as though some definitely have a better process than others. And I guess that goes without saying, but it's, it's, it's necessary. So I think this is a great topic to discuss really, you know, how do you stay in that mindset? For me, it, it, uh, I had that early on when I was still in school, I had that, um, I had one technical interview where I just like left out feeling like horrible. And I think it really takes, it doesn't, it doesn't take but a lot of times that experience helps you say, okay, this is a different beast. You can't just go in here saying, you know, I've had all the education. It's like, it's a different mindset. It's like, it needs to be fresh in your mind. These topics need to be fresh in your mind. You don't really have time to, um, for the whiteboard interviews to, uh, to like refresh your memory on the spot. You want to yeah. do that refreshing of the memory beforehand, before you go there. And there are senior engineers who I've talked to who said like they would fail code interviews to, uh, mm-hmm. cause, because you're focusing on different problems. It's a different mindset. You, there are, they are, there are actual uh, things that you will apply on the job, but you're not always applying all these things, this, this entire breadth yeah. of knowledge. Um, from day to day. So it is definitely a different piece. So uh, my one uh, big thing to stress is that uh, you're like, you're not alone. If you feel like this is a lot of information to learn and only being um, asked a few things like, yeah, that's true. (laughs) It is is definitely true. But I think breaking it down in some of the study guides, the community has been been able to provide can help say like, okay, if they ask me this question, it's within this bucket of knowledge. If they ask me this question, is this within this bucket of knowledge? And so even though you might not have the exact answer, you can um, explain it in a way where they know like, okay, this person knows what they're talking about and could solve this problem um, if, if, if they were able to do it. So sometimes you're asked a question where you're, you're, it's not about you getting right. It's just about being able to express and let the interviewer know that how you're thinking through that, through that, pro- uh, that process. Agreed. Yeah. Cause, um, you brought up a good point about, you know, some of the engineers that you work with that they're saying, yeah, I probably would fail. Um, and for me, I personally feel like those, like some whiteboard, not all of them, but some whiteboard interviews are just, how much work are you willing to put in to get this job? And that's it. Because it's all about who's going to study the most, who can retain what they've studied the most and regurgitate that back to me and, a clear um, and concise fashion. Um, and by concise, it doesn't mean that it has to be, you know, flat out right from the beginning, because a lot of um, a lot of these coded interviews, they just want to hear you talk through the problem. They want to mm-hmm. know and understand how your mindset is and how you're able to say, OK, well, this is going to be, you know, such and such complexity where I need it to be a little bit faster because this is something that the user sees or, you know, something that goes on in the background and things like that. And so um, those type of things um, are essentially what they're looking for. And um, one good thing that you, one good resource that you can use is um, Google actually has a YouTube channel where they go over like a bunch of their interview questions. How do you guys feel about um, like you've gave, given me your overall thoughts, but how do you essentially feel about them? Uh, we know Terrence likes, he thinks they're super necessary. Oh, uh, but yeah. Uh, well, I know starting off, so I have had the uh, take home project and the literal whiteboard. Um, and I think like, I know the take home project, it was kind of, uh, it was interesting because I mean, you, it's like, you get some time you know whether it be a day or a week to kind of complete something and uh i think one of the things that kind of got me was that i was trying to uh or at least i felt like i was stressed out because you know i wanted my code to be perfect you know and i want when they read it i wanted them to know that like i was the the right person for the job like you know of, of course you know you want the job as the end goal but you know 
somebody's reading your code, so you're kind of, you know, you kind of get like defensive about it where you're like, you know, I need to make sure that I'm doing this. I need to make sure I'm doing that. You know, like what are some of the coding standards that, you know, that I might need to follow? Uh, and I think one of the, I guess like a pro, a pro to it is that it does kind of give you a chance to, uh, you know, see something, see a pro, a problem that you wouldn't see on a day to day. I think one of the things that I kind of stressed out was that I felt like the problem that I did get, it was more like something you would see in college. So it, it, in a way it was kind of, you're comfortable with, you know, figuring out how to solve it. But the con is like, you know, you think like, oh, I thought they would actually, you know, build a website to do this or, you know, build a, a app to do such and such. And so like, you, you kind of feel like you, you overthink it a little bit. Um, but I will say like the con is that, you know, you've been coded in a certain way for if you, if you have been working with an employer, you've, you know, kind of uh, conformed to their standards. And then now you're interviewing for this brand new company. And of course they have their own standards. I think across the board uh, it's only, it might be rare, at least from my, my experience that everybody kind of follows the same structure format and, you know, such things like that. So I don't, I would say don't go in, you know, beating yourself up if you think that you could have did something more efficient or you could have did something a certain way because you know at the end of the day you know that's what you're what you're used to i mean if anything they'll come back and ask you you know why did you do it this way why do you consider it that way but you know at at the same time you know you you've been doing this for however long or if you're brand new at it you know you've been studying up for something like that for a while so you know it's what you know um and then i guess like like i think it as a learning process oh yeah of course like you said with you know, you feel like you weren't as efficient as you could have been with something. Well, it's like, all right, well, let me take note of this and, you know, go back to the drawing board, figure out how to be better in this particular area. Because number one, that also helps you with focusing in on, a, you know, a spot that you may be weak in. It's like, okay. all right, well, you know, for this particular one, we're going to figure out, you know, the best way to search through trees and things like that. So, yeah. Agreed. No, for sure. It's definitely a learning experience either way. I, I personally say, you know, if you can get a couple of interviews, because you'll get eventually what you'll end up seeing is that everybody has a different style of how they do them. And every you might even see similarities in questions. So, you know, if anything, that uh, as Jasmine noted, it's a learning experience that you can kind of take and move on to the next one. Um, and then the only thing else that I'll add is when I had my little whiteboard interview, I did feel the anxiety of somebody staring down my back, like, you know, hopefully I write this up correctly. And I was really Doing. wishing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was really wishing that I had a smart board that I could pull up Stack Overflow when I got stuck. So, <laughs> real programmers do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, where's the click button? I need to find this. <laughs> but it's also, um, I just remembered, well, notice that I didn't give a pro. And one of the pros is it helps you to refresh on the things that you may have forgotten. Mm -hmm, Uh, For sure. Because certain things you you may not think of in the forefront of your mind, but they're so ingrained in your subconscious when you're, like, going through your programming process that you just do it. And so um, having that refresher helps, you know, bring some of that stuff back to the forefront for you and things like that. How about you, team Manning? Pros, cons? Um, yeah, the pro for the pros and cons of the whiteboard session, you're able to have that dialogue back. Most likely, the, the person who's asking the question, they don't want you to just sit there um, in silence working. They want you to talk out loud. So you're having that dialogue back and forth. So they're able to get your thought process. And so that's a big pro. The con is just that we're so used to autocorrect uh, IDEs giving us those suggestions mm-hmm. and everything. And so that's really the con. You don't have that. So you really have to go off that memory. But that's when, in order to make up for it, you want to be able to, you want to be able to make sure that you can uh, speak out loud. Agreed. I do say that it is kind of like one of the biggest things is that, you know, you don't have that uh, autocorrect. It's like, what what did I use? But I mean, normally you're usually using like a little small function that you're building on. So, I mean, for the most part, you don't need to rely on it a whole lot, but you definitely want to make sure that you got your logic down pack and kind of like, you know, and I think too, uh, to kind of add on to what T-Man said is that, you know, you're used to a normal formal process, but like now you're like on the spot. So it's like... <laughs> Come up with something. <laughs> it's like, give me something good. Yeah. Uh, um, but um, it's also 
to think about when it comes to how we traditionally cope with IDEs. Like we're usually importing packages, modules, and you know, doing all that stuff. Whereas when they give you, you know, your questions and things, it's more so they're giving you general questions. Right. You know, um, it's very generic of, well, uh, what would you do if I told you I want this to do this? And it's more so they want you to think about, go through your think your thought process before you even start programming of what does this look like? What's the data types and all this different stuff. And then it's how do you get through from beginning to end to this particular piece? And then how can we rework this? Or if we can rework this, how would that look? Um, and so it, as far as your IDEs, it's, like it's nice to have, but for the coding interviews, um, they don't generally, you know, go that in depth with what they're doing, unless it's, you know, one of those take home projects, then yes, you're going through that whole process, but it's also a take home. So you have that chance to do all the things that, you know, we're talking about. Um, and so, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's essentially my thought on it. Um, as far as the pros, again, I I think it's great to have, you know, that that instant feedback of what you're doing and whether you're on the right track or not on the right track. Because sometimes it may just be a miscommunication between you and the person who's interviewing you, and you may not be on the right track at all. But you have that instant dialogue with them to, you know, get you through that. Um, whereas, you know, if you were sitting at home and you were going through, you may have misinterpreted the entire thing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. now it's like you send in something. It's like that's that's not what we had. Um, right. But also, generally, they're not going to be that broad for you to um, to even make that mistake. Um, and so, yeah. So, um, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying. So from all right. So we have whiteboard interview. We have pair programming. We have take home, and. What else is there, JB? I'm just trying to think. Word. Hmm? Just the word doc. And the doc. word doc. Word. Which one are y'all picking? Yeah. Which, which one, one? Which one is which one? If you had a choice between all of them, which one are you picking? <laughs> so, in all of my years of coding, my favorite is pair programming. But yeah. the mm. only problem with that is if your partner isn't as strong <laughs> as you are. True that becomes a problem because then it's, you know, you're pulling them along. But it also shows you where you fall within, you know, that um, that realm of programming skills because you may be the person that's, you know, not that strong. And sure. then it's like, ah, I'm really holding this back. Um, but that's also about you taking the initiative to go ahead and do what you need to do. How about you, Clarence? I think for me now... Uh, gone through it, I would definitely I favor more of the take home project because it gives me a little bit of a chance to kind of think things out. You know, in a lot of cases, they let you pick your own language, so you know, I could pick something that I'm a little bit more comfortable with, and you know, I could try to do my best. Uh, you know, um, but yeah, I think that would be the one that I would favor the most. I haven't had pair programming, I'm a little afraid because I already know I'm probably the weakest, so I wouldn't. Use <laughs> I'll claim my spot. Nonsense, Clarence. Nonsense. I'm so humble. <laughs> but I'm with you. I, I think I would take the, the take home test, even though it's like I know a lot of people say, oh, you know, you're not even getting compensated for that. But if if I want the job and stuff, I do think I can probably be that it's more realistic to the work that they would get from me on the day to day. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm I'm down to adapt what with uh with whatever they throw but for me the biggest thing is just knowing what to expect like if i know what i'm going like i don't want to go in there and like i don't know are they going to hand me like an exam to take like a paper exam and then throw me in here and then throw me there like i i want to know <laughs> like i don't have to know what they're <laughs> going the to heads ask, but i would like to know like some form of idea of the format to be honest but yeah. right and i also love just yeah, being able to speak on experiences and past projects as well 
Yeah, I think it all depends on who your audience is, too. Because I think, like, sometimes you might get a group, and again, this might be based off the company, but you might get a group who is a little bit more understanding. They are, they've all been there, so they kind of have, a, they all know that, you know, you're probably stressed out, especially if you're in front of it, you know, all of them. And I mean, I mean, let's be honest, nobody remembers everything. I mean, you have to remember the most core things that, you know, are essential to that particular role. But for the most part, like, we all know you Google it. <laughs> Yeah, you know what the Google for as well. <laughs> but that's a good turning point, though, as far as a resource. JB, uh, did you have some resources for us or want to talk about, you know, some ways we can... You know I do. <laughs> um, so, um, number one, I want to give a shout out to Maya underscore loves underscore code on um, Instagram because a lot of these resources came from her because she's... Uh, recently gone through the process of preparing and studying for um, quite a few different code interviews. Um, and so some of them, I'll just kind of give a general name and we'll be sure to put them in the um, the description down below. So there's the technical interview handbook um, that is hosted by Yang Shun on github.io. Uh, and it's just yangshan.github.io slash tech dash interview dash handbook. Um, another one is the uh, technical interview. Um, what was it? Technical interview uh, study guide. Um, and so that one is um, that one is really good. It gives you like a full like breakdown of different topic areas that you should make sure that you that you know and understand and cover before you get to your interviews and things like that. And then you have um, the technical interview cheat sheet um, that this one is was started a few years ago, but uh, has a lot of great information for you. And there's even some, um, some practices that you could do within um, the cheat sheet. And for all those people who feel like, you know, just the whiteboard sessions aren't for them, there is even a GitHub page that is dedicated to having a list of companies who don't um, have the whiteboard sessions as a part of their interviewing process. Um, and that is github.com slash P-O-T-E-T-O slash hiring dash white uh, without dash whiteboards, um, which is a great resource. They have it well organized and things for people to use. Um, and so, yeah, I hope all these resources help you guys get through your interview process. And it's very helpful for you all as you go through the process. Um, yeah, any last words from you guys? Oh, yeah, forgot about that one. And Cracking the Coding Interview uh, book um, as one of those uh, either you know, digital resources or uh, as Terrence has the actual physical book um, for you to go through, which I would definitely recommend the physical book just because it gives you that chance to, you know, actually nice. <laughs> take notes and go through that process. Um, so guys, this is, this is all we have for you. Uh, I hope this episode was very helpful and, you know, getting, at least a glimpse into what to what you could expect when it comes to whiteboard interviews and things like that. Um, please let us know if you have any additional things that you would recommend for whiteboard interviews or any comments that you have, you know, within our comment section and things like that. Please remember to um, leave a review on our um, our podcast um, for the people who are just listening. And for the people on YouTube, please make sure you comment down below. So we want to have that discussion with you guys about your thoughts and things like that. And um, please make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel. And without further ado, we're out. And also, happy belated Pi Day. Yes. All right, guys. We're out. <laughs> <laughs>